Well, we've produced projections before. The last ones were in 2002, but this represents a major step forward in providing information um, for planning adaptation advice. It's the most comprehensive analysis to date of what will happen in the future to climate in the UK. The new thing about these predictions is firstly that um, they provide more detailed information at um, 25 kilometre resolution, but more importantly they provide probabilistic advice. So what they're doing is providing a range of possible outcomes because we know that the future isn't certain and we need to be able to quantify that uncertainty so that people can use the information in risk analysis. We've taken the Met Office Hadley Centre as the basis for our projections and we've created 400 different models from that um, representing all that we know about the uncertainty in the science in our model. We've then also combined that information with information from 12 internationally known models from around the world which have been used in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Um, we've taken all of that and produced probability information combining it with 11 regional models that we've run to provide detailed information for the UK and to produce statistical information uh, about the risks of climate change in the future. Well, we'd expect for the UK that temperatures will increase uh, more in summer than in winter. We'll expect that rainfall overall over the year will stay pretty much the same, but there'll be increases in the winter and decreases in the summer. Well, temperatures are likely to rise everywhere. For example, in the southeast of England, by the 2050s, we'd expect the average daily maximum temperatures to reach 24 degrees, which is as hot as we saw in the very hot summers of 2003 and 2006, and even the record-breaking summer in 1976. Uh, the hottest day of the summer could typically be 32 and a half degrees. By the time we reach the 2080s, um, the temperatures will be even higher, and the hottest day of the summer in a, in a very hot summer could go as high as 41 degrees. The latest results suggest that summer rainfall will decrease, uh, probably by around 20%, although there is a small chance that it could decrease by as much as 60%. The previous projections uh, suggested that it would decrease by a much larger amount of 60%, and this illustrates the value of the new projections in giving prob probability ranges um, and actually assessing the risk properly. The previous model that we were using was tended to be too dry in summer, and that's why it dried out more than the projections that we've got now. The comprehensive nature of these projections means that they're ideal for people who are doing planning of large infrastructure projects, um, long-term planning for the future, where they need to take adaptation information into account and they need to do a proper risk assessment. So they're really designed for people who want to look in detail at how climate will change in the future and how it will impact on other factors and how it will interact with other factors. And they're not specifically designed for the public, but of course they can be used by the public as well. Obviously the probabilistic nature of the predictions means that anything that only has a 10% chance of happening, we need to recognise that it's, it's unlikely, but nevertheless we need to look at the risk. We also need to look at both the high, medium and low emission scenarios and use that to help us to understand how much we need to reduce emissions in order to avoid the worst possible extremes. The predictions use the best possible science that's available now, so um, they represent the state of the art of the science. As we learn more about how climate will change in the future, and particularly the risks at the high end of dangerous climate change with things like methane release as temperatures increase, we will be able to refine the predictions, uh, and so they will need to be updated in the future. There's a lot that we can do to limit the effects of climate change by reducing our emissions and the government is working hard um, in negotiations that will lead to in Copenhagen in December to um, encourage international reductions in emissions and uh, the EU has a very strong stance in this in trying to limit global warming to two degrees which would reduce some, many of the impacts later on in the century. When we look at the impacts around uh, up to the time of around 2040, 2050, many of those are uh, already set um, because of the emissions that we've already produced and so we will need to adapt to those changes.